Hello. Hello and welcome to part one of the order block strategy. Now, before we get anywhere, what I suggest is to make sure that you do not miss any of the videos in this section before jumping on to either a demo or a live account. Even if you do uh, finish this section and all the sections for the order block strategy, I don't recommend jumping into a live account until you feel you are confident enough and producing profitable trades either on back testing or forward testing on a demo account until yeah uh, I don't suggest that you jump to a live account until you have successfully been able to produce that what I suggest doing is once you finished is and I remind you at the end of the this strategy is doing the 100 trade test which I know sounds long but it helps you build your confidence in order to uh, succeed using this strategy. This strategy is by no means easy. And what I suggest is making sure you're taking notes throughout the videos. And I have made the videos as short as possible to make them into um, bite-sized chunks. So without further ado, I will start off with the very first video. Now the first video is identifying an order block. Now, before you get anywhere with this strategy, you need to know the reason why. Why are we trading the way that we are? So essentially, we know that institutions are the reason why these big moves are happening, right? Retail traders do not, we, we don't do any of this. We don't produce big impulses like this, okay? That's all for the institutions. So what does that mean and how does that benefit us? So essentially what we are doing with this strategy is we are trading the footprints that are being left behind by the institutions. So what do I mean by that? So have you ever been in a trade where you're like this? So you're going in, you're in a nice uptrend, right? And you've got a nice, sorry, let me actually move that there. You're in a nice uptrend, right? And you got a good, you got a great trend line, and also, um, uh, yeah, I'll use this. And also, you've got a very nice EMA. So, have you ever been in the situation where you're in the situation? You got a one touch. Okay, that's probably three touches actually. Let me get rid of. Let me get rid of this one here. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been in a situation where you've got one touch, two touch on a trend line using a standard retail strategy and then you place a trade going on the third touch, right? But then this happens. You get probably sometimes a small reaction, right? And then price shoots down. And then what happens afterwards? Price decides to fly in the way that you are going to trade anyway. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, that was just a stop hunt. And the question, and the thing about that is, yes, it was. Okay, these are real. What does that mean, and how does that benefit us? So, using a standard retail strategy, not saying that we are institutional traders by any means, we are still retail traders. So, do not forget that. But we need to be aware of what is happening in this situation. Let me show you another example. Have you ever? Let me draw this out. Let me take this out of the way. Have you ever been in a situation where? You're, you've got this strong support level, okay? You look to enter a trade at this support level. Then what happens, you get a small reaction, which is fine, and then you get taken out and then price continues. Okay, so we've got this strong support, right? There's a lot of su uh, support and resistance traders, and you're probably thinking, ah, oh, okay. I've just been taken out, my stop's been taken, but I got the direction correct. Okay, well done. But you still lost the trade. Alternatively, in this situation, have you ever been a breakout trader where you've been placing a trade at the breakout, you're expecting price to come, right? And then you catch the breakout and you're thinking, yay, you know, you've, you got it correct. But then you get taken out. All right, you were completely wrong on that trade. Why is that? Okay. That's what you need to think about. Why ha, Why does that happen over and over again? These strategies are based on probabilities. However, it ignores what is actually happening in the market and who drives the market. 
when price is being pushed down and then goes up in your favor what you realize is price is starting to price does this why is that there price does this it goes from here it comes back down and then it continues now at this point you're probably thinking why does it do that so let's think about it from this perspective so everyone knows about support and resistance okay everyone everyone knows how that works even the institutions so they know that people are going to be placing orders at this point they're going to be placing buy limit orders to catch the bounce and sell stop orders to catch the breakout but for the market to work someone needs to lose and for someone to win right so for me to win you need to lose for you to win i need to lose not directly but that's just how it works that's how the markets function okay it's a sad truth institutions are fully aware of these standard support and resistance strategies these standard trend line and fib strategies sometimes they work sometimes they don't but this is the reason why because they're based on probabilities and it does not actually think about what is actually happening in the market price right if we do this as no actually let me just change the color oops there we go so price is being pushed down right and then what happens it is let me use a green candle Okay, so uh, green is my bullish candle in this situation. Okay. Uh, right. And then what happens is price comes and it comes back down. and then it shoots back up again oh there we go okay and so on now this push down before the push up is the big is the first footprint so price is being pushed purposely right by the institutions to take everyone out to grab the stop losses and to trigger the sales the breakout traders once they've done that once they've grabbed enough liquidity now it's time to grab liquidity from the breakout traders and price is being pushed up okay but they wanted to go long they've always wanted to go long right so they are going long from down here right um why is that not working Right, so they're going long from this position, right? Which is fine. But if you think about it from this perspective, they've had to push price down to get there. So they've had to place a sell position to come down. But they don't use stop losses. This doesn't exist. So they are sitting in drawdown once price is up there. Although they're in a profitable trade going up, they're still sitting on drawdown on the first trade. They sacrificed this position to get a price there, to grab liquidity and create this move. So what happens is they need to close this sell position, right? To continue their move up. They don't want to they don't want to take a loss. So they need to mitigate their orders, mitigate their loss in order to do so. So this comes into question what is an order block? The order block is basically the last place where the, where the institutions have placed their orders before the move happens. So if we think about it from this perspective, where is where is that position? Because what we can see is, I did not mean to draw that there, but what we can see is this is the last bearish candle before the bullish move. Okay, so what does that mean? This is the order block. This is the last place where the, where the institution sold before price is pushed up. So they need to come and mitigate their loss, right? They need to close it e either at break even or a small loss, and then they can continue their move as they always wanted to do. So they've always wanted to go bullish, right? But they need to close out this trade. 
This happens time and time again. So what does that mean? How does that benefit us? Is we know that this mitigation needs to happen. So we're going to look to enter at this mitigation because we know that price is coming back and we're basically looking to take a trade from there to continue the move with them. Okay, not saying that we're institutional traders by any means. We're just following the footprints that's being left behind. Okay, so think about it that way. We are essentially trying to find the last orders that price can, the last orders where institutions have placed against the original move, against the move that they wanted to take. So that if they wanted to go bullish, we're going to be looking for the last bearish candle before the bullish move that broke structure. That's the next key point. So for an order block to be an order block, right? Um, an order block needs to break structure. This is what we call a BOS. Okay, BOS is break of structure. So what you can see is the order block has broken this structure here. Okay, so we know that this is strong enough to do so. Retail traders will not create a move that will break structure. So just bear that in mind. The order block, as we know, is here. So for a bullish move, the order block is the last bearish candle before the bullish move. Okay, and for a bearish move, the order block is the last bullish candle before the bearish move. Okay, and this should just make sense. Why? It's because it's the last place where the banks for a bearish move, it's going to be the last place where the banks have bought before the big sell happened. Okay. That's essentially all it is. And that's how we would identify order blocks. Okay. So that is a the theory we are all behind it. We are trading the mitigation of their orders. So if you think about it from this perspective, um, uh, let me try find a good example is actually we were on a good example okay when we talk about liquidity it will make more sense but what we know is when there is a price that breaks structure and then it for example continues to go in the favor of the overall trend that is questionable Okay, because what we can see is that price broke this low that was being cr created, right? Because it created a low and it created a lower high, right? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, a lower high, and then it broke structure, created a new low, and then price went on to break structure. Why has it done that? It has grabbed liquidity from this previous low, right? There's also going to be smart money traders who's going to be placing a sell from this position here, from this order block because that's the order block that broke structure. But the overall move that, as we know, the overall trend is bullish. And we'll discuss that later on in the course, which will make more sense. But price, the institutions have pushed this move, okay? We know institutions were active. Look how, look at these big impulses, right? Institutions were definitely active at that point, but then price impulsively broke structure. And if we look at it from a daily perspective, what we can see, is price is breaking structure on the daily now for that big impulse to happen retail traders are not doing that okay we cannot create those moves okay now we need to identify where the order block actually is so the order block is the last bearish candle before the bullish move which we can see is here okay we're going to talk about order block refinement in another section but that's essentially how you find the order block now we can question whether this is this order block here we can question if that's an order block or not and the answer is yes that is an order block because it is the last bearish candle before the bullish move but when we talk about refinement it will make more sense why these are both equally valid 
in terms of being order blocks. Same situation as we have here, right? Same situation as we have here. So we have a bullish move which broke structure. Where is the last candle, the last bearish candle before the bullish move? Okay. We have one here. Is that an order block? No, because it didn't cause any break of structure, right? And if we look in the higher time frames, and this is where it makes sense, the overall order block is this candle here, okay? But it didn't cause any structure break. The structure broke from around here, okay? So yes, this is an order block overall. If we look at this from a different perspective, the order block that is sitting is right there, okay? We, it's either one of these two. But before the move actually happened, is this one. That is your order block in this situation. And it will make more sense when we talk about refinement. But you need to understand what an order block actually is before moving forward. So to break it down very simply, an order block is the last place where institutions have been active before a move occurs. So for a bullish move, the order block is the last bearish candle before the bullish move. For a bearish move coming down, the order block is the last bullish candle before the bearish move, right? We are trading the mitigation of their orders. When price is coming back to the order block at the last possible place that they have placed uh, sell orders, they need to mitigate those trades and that's where we're going to look to enter. So this mitigation play which is happening here, that's where we're going to look to enter the trades, okay? And that's essentially the footprint that we are trading. So in terms of order blocks, that's essentially all you need to actually understand. Okay, we are trading the footprints and we're trading the mitigation. So an order block needs to be strong enough to break structure, right? And it's the last, last candle of the opposite before the big move. That's all you need to think about. It's very, very simple. And we're going to talk about how to refine them in the next video.